A wild mat has appeared. Somebody catch it! Why am I throwing my own Pokeball? That doesn't work. Anyway, hi guys, welcome to the show. Today is a very special episode of Matt's Minutes. If you haven't guessed, we're going to be talking about Pokemon. But today is another fan-suggested episode suggested by my good friend, Hamdan. So, I have my laptop so I can read exactly what this is. We got a lot to get into, so the topic is, and I quote, uh, I would like to submit Pokemon, but more about the mechanics of the Pokeballs, why some are better than others, do Pokemon eat, sleep, train inside, what happens inside? Same with the Pokeboxes, how do they work? Maybe some some info on how they heal in the Poke Center. So that's a lot of stuff to get into today. So today's might be a little bit on the longer side and we're gonna go back to physics class from high school. So without any further ado, do you have a minute to catch them all? Greetings friends and welcome to another exciting episode of Matt's Minutes. So, as we've already discussed, we have a lot to get into today. So, to start, I think we need to actually take a look at what exactly a Pokeball does. And, you know, you kind of get some mixed answers when you look this up. Some say, you know, it creates a very hospitable habitat specific to each Pokemon, and I couldn't find much evidence to actually support that. I also heard that it turns them into light and then uses mirrors on the inside to bounce them around over and over again, which that seemed a little bit more probable, but in my research I was amazed at what all I found actually happens with a Pokeball. Now, give or take, I couldn't find a true canon explanation, so this is just using real-world physics. So, let's get into that. So what exactly do we see when a Pokeball is used? Well, we see that first the trainer has to weaken the Pokemon, then throws the ball, hits the Pokemon, and the Pokemon is converted to light and then goes inside the ball. So what we see happening is, bear with me here, E equals MC squared. No, I'm not kidding. What does that actually mean though? It means energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. To shorten things up, it means that energy and mass can be the same thing. So what that actually means in this case is that it is possible to convert mass into energy or a Pokemon into light, which is exactly what's happening. And not only that, but we can do it vice versa and create energy or have energy created mass. Boom, problem solved, right? Eh, kind of. See, in order for this to work, a Pokeball would need to have a capacitor in it because we're dealing with a lot of energy that, you know, as a result of turning this mass into energy, you know, we're talking about more energy than like a nuclear power plant, like a lot of energy just being expelled at once. So in order to do that, we need some kind of sci-fi level capacitor that, you know, we nowadays do not have the technology to be able to hold that much energy in one place at one time, but theoretically, you know, Pokemon, or at least Pokemon Universe, does. So, that would be how a Pokeball works, and then in order to release the Pokeball, you could use, as we see sometimes, where they shoot a beam of light from the Pokeball, and then boom, there's Pokemon, because it's converting energy into mass. So, that could work. But if that's the case, why do we have different Pokeballs? Now the reason we have different types of Pokeballs is because each Pokeball has a different capacitor in it. So a Pokeball has a very basic capacitor in it compared to that found in a Great Ball or an Ultra Ball. Which is also why the price goes up from a Pokeball to a Great Ball to an Ultra Ball is because they have a stronger capacitor. Now let's take another Pokeball for example like, uh, let me see here, let's take a Moon Ball. So 
a moon ball might have a capacitor in it that is much more likely to catch Pokemon of a certain type or that radiate a certain energy as it's being catched. So in this case, it would be lunar energy or those that can evolve through a moonstone. Um, what are the fast ball? Might be a Pokeball that has a capacitor that kicks in really, really quickly to help catch those faster Pokemon. And uh, let's just do one more here. Let's do the Dusk Ball. Um, so this is a Pokeball that catches Pokemon closer to at night or in dark tunnels. So it might be that light disrupts this capacitor a little bit if there's like an outside source of light. So by having it in a dark cave, it makes it more successful to catch a particular kind of Pokemon such as Zubat, Onix, or Graveler, or any of those. At least, you know, these are all in theory, of course, as to why this works, because like I said, none of these are technically canon. I'm just kind of, you know, trying to tie some things together. So then the next question is the Poke Box that holds all the Pokemon in it. And how does that work? How do you transfer Pokemon to the box and out of the box? Quite simply, they're in a state of energy, so you're just transferring energy from one place to another, and conveniently, light is really easy to transport. So, you just take the Pokeball, boom, transports it into light, and boom, there you go. Now it's in a Pokebox, and the Pokebox has a stronger capacitor than a normal Pokeball. That's why you can store so many in one box, but each box has its limit, because the capacitor is only, you know, it's not infinitely strong. It can only hold a certain number of Pokemon. And now, for the final question, how do Pokus Centers work? That's a great question, and that's the one where I kind of had a harder time explaining this, but from what I could gather, if a Pokemon in its Pokeball is, you know, given to the Poke Center, they might have the capacity of healing that Pokemon in, while it's in an energized form by giving it other kinds of energy or replacing damaged energy or cells with non-damaged. I, like I said, that one was a little bit of a stretch. But regardless, it seems like they could do this. However, this also means that the Poke Center would also need to be very tech savvy and have its own capacitor in order to heal these Pokemon in such a way. Now, also with that, the Pokemon Center has to be able to deal with Pokemon that have mass. So, they are more of, for lack of a real-world term, veterinarians, I guess, when it comes to Pokémon that are in their mass form. So, Nurse Joy is doing a lot. She is helping both physical and energy, or I guess, not, she's not helping those. She is helping Pokémon that, that have mass and Pokémon that are in energy form at the same time. What kind of degree do you even need to do to be, a, or I guess have, in order to be able to do that, because that seems like quite a lot to ask one person to do. But, hey, that's Nurse Joy. What can I say? Whew! There was a lot more physics in this one than I was really thinking there would be. But, you know, hopefully all of this made sense. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm onto something? Do you think all of this kind of makes sense and now it's like, yay, this... This is what happens in a Pokeball, though don't go to the Pokemon company and say this because it's not canon, but you know, it could possibly be what's happening in a Pokeball, yay! Um, but yeah, please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please give it a like, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we post videos every Monday, but this way you'll be up to date on all the newest content. And again, a huge shout out to my friend Hamdan for suggesting this, and of course you would post the the topic that required the most work so far. But anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I will catch you guys next time.